Hey guys, thank you for giving NodeKDH 3.0 a shot. We are honored. Today we are reviewing a hand in Holder Manager 2 using irreplaceable NC 3.0. Purpose of this video is to teach you how to construct game plan quickly to make your decisions easier and your win rate higher. And also to teach you methodology of finding leaks in your opponent's tendencies so you can start exploiting them better and more frequently. We'll tackle on one of the most frequent situations, specifically when we open button and get called by big blind. Okay, let's go. So as you can see, uh, we actually opened the button and we got called by the big blind. So it's, it's all good. And we are in the flop. One thing I want to mention here is I don't really want to review this specific hand. Rather than that, I, I'd like to teach you how I think in those spots and how I use statistics in, in the process of making a decision. So um, first thing we want to do is we want to locate a pop-up responsible for having all the stats that we want to use or we might want to use. and the actual pop-up is located in the bottom left corner, the 47 number. Uh, the 47 is fold to flopsy, but out of position. And when we click on it, a uh, pop-up appears. So the pop-up's name is single race spot, out of position color, we raised in position. Yes, we raised in position, we are in the bottom, we are always in position. And he called from out of position he's uh, on the big blind. So it's all good, it's the pop-up we need. And uh, the first thing we're gonna look at in the pop-up is how often does he call on the big blind against the button open? And this is located here, the 44.5% uh, percent. and if we hover over the stats, there's a nice feature of Note Caddy uh, showing us a matrix of all hands he called with in the past. So we can see that he's probably playing every suited hand uh, to our button open. He's not going so low uh, with off suit hands. So it's, it's a good info. It's always good to know. And then uh, we go to the bolded stats section, the whole area, the bolded stats, they're uh, responsible for all the post lab action. So Mm, if our opponent don't bets, we want to look at the donk section here, but just because I don't think it happens very frequently, it's located on the bottom of all stats. Uh, if it happens, you have all the stats. If it doesn't, you don't need to clutter your head with, uh, with those statistics. If they were higher, uh, we would see them and therefore our brain would need to process them and I don't want to spend my brain's resources on statistics that I don't even use. So that's the reason why they're here. Okay. Then we want to look at the green rectangle here. The green rectangle contains all the most frequently used and most important statistics. And it's almost always the first thing you want to look at. So if we're on the button, we have two options. We can either bet or check. So in other words, we want to compare two strategies. One would be a C betting strategy. The other would be checking back strategy. So if we want to uh, evaluate C betting strategy, we definitely need fault C bet stats. And these are 47, 46 and 63%. So the first two are quite normal, maybe on the bit, uh, bit higher side, but the 63% is, is, is very high for a, for a fault to reverse C-bet. Mm. So our natural conclusion is to bet three times. Uh, we can also compare the statistics with uh, those stats here in the panel uh, because these stats are big blind versus button specifically fault to see bad flop, turn and the river. And this is 58 here, 63 here. So it's a bit lower, but it's still high. So, so we're still good. Once we are done with fault to see bad stats, I'd go to check race stats. 
These are 13, 5 and 10 for flop, turn and the river. And I think the best way to, to do it is to go from the river to the flop. It will be easier this way, I think. And 10% is, I think it's normal. It's not low, it's definitely not high. And given the fact that he's folding a lot on the river, I think in general, people who tend to fold a lot, they are not the types of uh, players who, who exploit people. So I think he plays his game and if he, even if he sometimes check raises you as a bluff, it's not, it's not enough to justify catching him. So I would just play normal uh, and fold a lot against uh, river check raises from him, especially that we print a lot of money just by betting. So yeah, uh, on the turn, he check raises 5% and this is, this is pretty low. Uh, it's worth mentioning that he's also betting the river after check raising the turn 67% of the time. So it's not just that we call the check raise on the turn. You need to know that he's gonna bet a lot on the river. And because it's really small, I would just fold a lot as well. It just, he cannot possibly exploit us with this percentage, even if he does sometimes bluff it just it, it cannot be enough and we can we can see what his uh, checkers on the turn was in the past and it was two pairs middle pair and top pair i don't know you know w what were the circumstances of him check raising uh top pair we cannot see it here but maybe it was some kind of a recreational player or, or short stack and he decided to shop for for the rest of his stack with top pair but definitely uh it doesn't show a lot of bluffs there was one middle hand middle pair hand but yeah i would just play normal fold a lot against this, this strong aggression play okay then we have 13 percent on the flop check raise and I think it's a very good number. It's it's good aggressive number. It's definitely not low. It's not too high. It's not very easy to outplay this number if 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 the range is constructed well at least. So first thing I wanna do, I, I wanna check how he constructs his check raising range on the flop. And to do so uh, in NCE, you can just go down to the white area here and hover over the, the red start in the first row which is flop check raise. And you can see a graphic representation of hands he check raised in the past. And as you can see, uh, those are more than half of the time, pretty strong hands. There are two pairs, sets, not straights, combo draws, uh, top pair, top kicker, pair plus trade draw. And even if he doesn't have a mate hand already, he usually has some kind of equity like open under middle pair, uh, gut shots. So I think it will be very hard for us to play against this range, especially that after his 13% check raise, he continues on the, uh, on the turn 56% of the time and then on the river 67% of the time. So this is also very important for us to check those stats. That's why they're all uh, colored blue. So it's easy for you to, to see the follow up actions of the guy. And I, I think it's generally a good idea to fold medium to, to weak hands against this guy, because at least if we are not uh, comfortable on, on, on the given structure, uh, because even if he ha doesn't have us beat already, it's a very high chance that he'll outdraw us or he, at least he won't let us go to the showdown easily. So uh, folding is generally a good idea, I think. So we're done with the C betting strategy. Now we proceed to checking back strategy. First stat we wanna look at is bet versus miss C bet. And in this case, it's 34%, which is kind of low. Uh, and right after it we want to see how often he bets the river he continues the aggression on the river uh, in this case it's 42 percent so again it's pretty low and our conclusion could be we can 
easily check behind our second, third pairs, ace highs, because this guy is not gonna bluff us out of this, those hands. And if he bets twice after our check back, uh, we can fold our second pairs relatively easily because this should be very strong range. And if we're not sure, we can also check the graphic representation of this 42% uh, in the bottom. And if we hover over the next to last row, uh, we see that in the past there were really strong hands. And if you see a middle pair here, I don't think it was for bluff. It was, he was value betting in, in certain spots. So knowing this, makes it really easy to fold ace high or second or third pair because sometimes at least you know i know for myself that it's very hard to figure whether your opponent is value betting or is uh, bluffing a lot because after our check behind he can have all his range and you know it's, it's just a big guessing game and knowing this with nce it's, it's really easy. So you can make good falls. You don't overfold because you're certain that he's not bluffing enough. So that, that's really cool. So if he bets 34%, it means that he doesn't bet 66% of the time. So 66% of the time he, check, he checks twice to us. And in this case, we have to go to the blue rectangle here, which is responsible for the turn stats. And these are forward vers versus delayed C bets out of position. And then how often he does fold against a follow up bet on the river. So it's 55% of, uh, of the time that he folds against the delayed C bet. Uh, and it's very important to understand one thing here that if this number here, the bet versus miss bet is high, this situation here won't occur very often. So even if it's 90% uh, fold versus delayed bet, it doesn't matter all that much. It, you won't be able to exploit it if the bet versus miss bet is high because it's, it's gonna occur so rarely. So it's important to understand those two numbers, they, they work together. And more often you can get in here, the more often you can exploit if there is anything to exploit. Uh, so in this case, we can get in there really often because 66% is a lot. And then his fault against delayed C, but is 55%, which is great because we can, uh, we can bet almost always after checking back. We usually want around 40% of fold equity, we have 55. And then if he doesn't fold the turn, we can also bet the river and he's gonna fold 57% of the time, which is a lot again. So this is really nice option to check behind our bluffs and then delete C bet turn and continue on the river because he's gonna fold enough. So we don't always need to uh, bet three times because this was one option we we could do also and I think if I were to bet three times I would choose some kind of dynamic structures where turn and the river card can change a lot and if I were to check behind I would I would usually do it on some kind of a dry boards like for example king deuce five where by betting twice I know he will fold every float, every ace high, uh, maybe second or third pair, but the third third bet wouldn't really be that great because I don't think anybody folds top pair of kings and there is no much not many cards that can change a lot. So in general on the dry boards, I would transfer a lot of my bluffs to the turn and play them by delayed C betting and continuing the river. It's it's mostly it's two streets game anyway on the on the dry boards because it's not very frequent that you have three streets of value with any hand. So I think it's 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 a good option. And the last thing we get, we will focus on is the red rectangle here. And the check 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 
check fault uh, means that if nobody bet until the river to us and we do it uh, our opponent will fold 69 percent so this is again this is huge percentage of fault and in general if we don't uh, beat ace high i think we should bet always on the river because it's, it's like printing money if you add up those situations in, in, in the long run, it's it's like, I think the impact on your win rate is huge. If you if you use every situation where you can scoop a pot so easily, uh, you're gonna you're gonna win much more in long run. So check call check check and check fall is basically his fault against bet check bet line. So he folds sixty two percent. Mm, so I think in some scenarios where, for example, like like here, if I see but here, then if he checks and I check behind on the turn and he checks again on the river, I think in this case you can probably bet the the river with some bluffs because he's gonna bet himself an ace and if he didn't then probably he's folding most of the time. Yeah. So these are nice, nice statistics and nice values, nice, nice big folds. So definitely we should, we should use it. To summarize uh, what we have found here, uh, we definitely should bet three times on dynamic board textures uh, where many things can change. We should fold medium and weak hands against his check raise because he's hard to outplay. The way he constructed his range is very hard to outplay. Uh, we can check back medium showdown value because he's not gonna bluff us too much. We just call once and fall the river. Uh, yeah, as we can see, he, he bets uh, river with strong range after stabbing the turn. Uh, we can definitely check back some air on dry boards and delay to see but bluff them from turn and continue our aggression on the river as well. And if he didn't bet to you until the river, you always should bet because it's extremely high EV plus spot and you should always use it. This is the statistic here. So yeah, this is uh, this is our general game plan against this guy in this, this situation or in, in, in position against his out of position call. And since we have this hand here, uh, let's let's go over it and let's let's uh, review it so he checked to us he didn't dunk uh, we checked behind i think it's i like the check behind here um, i mean there are two two ways to play this this hand you can just check and uh, try to get to the showdown because king high is good but i think in if if i have stats like this if my opponent has stats like this I prefer to bet it from the turn because this is a dry board as we spoke before and then we can you know fold him out of some third pairs and stuff like that third fourth pairs um, but in this scenario he doesn't check he actually bets o over bets uh, but I don't see anything else we can do rather than just calling so we call and we hit so that's nice what he can have here, I think, is uh, usually it's some kind of a draw, like maybe, I don't know, 5-6, uh, maybe some spades, or or two pairs also, because if he thinks we have an ace, and uh, we always call it an ace, maybe he has like ace-4 or something like that, and he wants to get full value on the turn. But then he checks the river and our hero bets big and i think i like the big bet here because the two pairs might some sometimes get scared uh, of the flash that hit on the river and yeah i don't see him i don't know check calling with spades uh, i don't know if if betting small is better it is good because uh, i don't see him check raising us uh, we look like we have either an ace or we have uh, a flash draw. So I don't see him trying to bluff us at all because if he's 
if we call the bet over bet on the turn, we look pretty strong. And betting small on the river, I don't think he, he's gonna buy it and, and check race as, as a bluff. I don't think so. So yeah, in general, I like the, the sizing. And he called and we don't know what he had, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, uh, after this video, you know how to create game plan as PFR when you're in position what to look at while deciding whether to use the betting strategy or checking back strategy to bluff and why some stats are placed differently than the basic logic would say in our pop-ups i mean and that winning a lot of small pots makes a big difference in your win rate you should always try to scoop the pots that are just lying around and waiting for you to bet so thank you a lot for for watching and let me know what you think. Cheers.